If you haven't been paying attention, it's becoming increasingly more clear that the gatekeepers of the video gaming industry are losing their grip and hold on the gamers that are playing games nowadays. I don't think there's anything more clear than that from what we're seeing happening with the games Dustborn and Concord, where Concord and Dustborn are games kind of built on the labor and political progressive ideals that a lot of the video gaming magazines, journalists, and developers have focused on producing for years, yet these games are utterly failures to the gamers themselves regardless of the rescue efforts that we're seeing happening on the game social media front where people are trying to put up the facade that these games need to be played and these games need to be supported because their ideals are more valuable than actually gamers having fun with a game that they actually like and see interesting and I think this is what we've been seeing as gamers throughout the video gaming industry for such a long time where we have these social media posts these magazines these websites these reviewers these games journalists who are always trying to enforce their personal politics onto the gaming audience regardless of what the gamers actually want to see from these sources and i think this is what we're seeing from ign and kotaku as they go out and try to defend these games and i think that's what we're seeing from ign and kotaku as they go out trying to defend these games for their failures and i think this is the result that we're seeing where they're accusing the game player base themselves of being racist homophobic and every other ism on the planet and this seems to be the game plan for any entertainment organization that holds itself as a political activist organization we see this in hollywood we see this in the music industry if you don't like something you're obviously an evil person and that's how we're seeing this progress in the video gaming industry as kotaku comes out attacking the gamers for not supporting a game that could clearly use the support of kotaku because basically only 23 people are playing the game and i think probably the kotaku editing staff can actually support this game by playing this game for at least 24 hours where they can boost these numbers up to 100 people but of course that's not the case they don't want to support the game they want the gamers to support the game and that's just not happening and you're not going to have that because this game was made for non-gamers and that's the audience you're going for and the audience that receives you is about 50 people and i think that's what dustborn is playing for and i think this is the result that they should expect Furthermore, if they try to produce more games like this, and I think that's the essential thing a lot of people have to understand about their political ideology when you mix it in with the general video gaming audience. It's not going to be a good mixture because most gamers are there to play good games that are fun and interesting, not robotic political activists messaging machines that are just out there to put out a philosophy rather than actually make a good time for the people that actually purchase that property and i think dustborn is probably the ultimate version of that game where it's just not made for game players at all concord at least attempted to make a game of course they have some of the most unappealing characters in general in the history of gaming but at least they made the attempt of making a good game and i think this is the situation that concord is finding itself in where it's just a game that is not made for the gaming audience anymore and i think that's where we're seeing that loss of influence where it's being made palpable to the gaming audience where people are just not listening to them and their bad reviews about the games that they love and their positive reviews about the games they love the game journalists love and I think we can see that more clearly than anything with Black Myth Wukong Black Myth Wukong is a game that was being trashed from a lot of outlets that review these video games. They came out with their own political statements demanding more diversity, chastising the game for its lacking of inclusivity. Of course, this is the famous article from Screen Rant. We can see the opposite happening from industry darlings that are supported by gigantic developers and actually actively pursue the political messaging that we usually see in the games that the game journalists do love we see this with star wars outlaws it got a good rating but is that rating worth anything are the gamers gonna listen to them it seems like that's not the case with star wars outlaws barely scratching the surface with over 2500 players playing the game i think that's the situation that we're seeing now the positive review stuff is not getting the same traction as the negatively reviewed stuff and i think we've seen this all throughout the year recently where games like dustborn yeah they're getting good ratings but they're not getting the same numbers as a black myth wukong which is in almost in the same vicinity of dustborn in its rating which is around a seven black myth wukong may have gotten an eight 
but it has the numbers of a triple A title game that is worthy of a nine or ten and maybe one of the games of the years. And you can see there's such a close discrepancy between these two titles. One that is an abysmal game with terrible gameplay, horrible messaging, terrible story dynamics, and it's given a seven by IGN. And you have another game that is challenging, amazing, great gameplay, good story dynamics, and it has an eight. That discrepancy right there is the thing that is destroying player confidence in these media outlets, these game journalists and IGN and Kotaku because their ratings are just based on things that are not concerning to the game players themselves. To get to this place where Dustborn is almost in the same level as Black Myth Wukong, no one will believe that. And I think that's the situation that we're having right now where no one's believing these scores anymore. You have games like The First Ascendant, one of the biggest games of the summer. It came out with a five. I wouldn't say it's one of the best games of the year, but it's it's definitely better than Dustborn and it's definitely better than Concord which got a 7 as well so this game is thriving has over 40,000 people still playing it to this day while Concord barely has 200 people and you can see the discrepancy there again where people are just not believing these reviews anymore and I think it shows even more so with games like Stellar Blade. Stellar Blade personally to me is the game of the year. I love this game. I played it twice over. I'm willing to play it again in PC and maybe only Black Myth Wukong may challenge that but even I doubt that. Stellar Blade, one of the best games of the year, barely got a 7. It's on the same level as Dustborn and that's another discrepancy there for the gamer right there who loved this game played it four or five times and you're saying it's on the same level as Dustborn no no one's gonna believe that and I think that's the situation in gaming nowadays no one believes the gaming journalists anymore and any of the reviews that they have built up on the games that they do review and I think that's the situation we're ultimately getting at right now where no one's gonna believe what comes out of these gaming journalists mouth anymore Kotaku IGN the gatekeepers of gaming have lost their influence and I think it's a glorious thing it's a thing I wanted to see happen in the gaming world and it's funny that it's happening right now where they've successively shown themselves to the gamers that they do not have the same values of the people that play these games. And I think for the gamers themselves who played all these games that they did review in a positive, negative way, you can tell the difference right there that, okay, I can't trust these magazines. I can't trust these social media sites or game reviewers or journalists anymore because they believe in something completely different than I, the gamer, believe in. And I think it's been made clear through this summer with all the ratings for all these games recently that, yeah, Kotaku IGN, they don't like games the same way you do. And I think that's a realization a lot of gamers came to this summer most recently. And I think it's something that's been developing over time. If you don't know anything what happened with Days Gone. Days Gone was the first game to actually suffer from this a skewed opinion where people were trashing the game because of its politics and how it was focused on a white male. It wasn't even about the game itself. Most of the reviews that were trashing this game, the game came in with a low rating on Metacritic and people trashed the game until they actually played the game and it was such a popular game that it actually outsold some of the, the bigger titles that year. I think it sold almost 10 million copies. So it was one of the biggest games of the year but was trashed so consistently because it didn't follow these political activist messaging points. And I think that discrepancy kind of built off this distrust in the industry and I think now we're seeing that distrust pay off and finally having the gamers break away from this review structure that has kept them in a chokehold and have destroyed many games just like Days Gone. And I think that's the justice I was hoping for Days Gone that eventually people would stop listening to the IGNs and Kotakus because they literally almost killed this game and they did destroy this game's future for a sequel because of the bad reviews. And I think seeing this game fail because of that is kind of astonishing and I'm hoping we can stop that and I think we can stop that if we just stop listening to these reviews and giving them credence we can finally move towards an era where not only the gamers don't listen to the video game reviews where we can move on to where the developers themselves stop listening to the games journalists because they just don't matter anymore of course this is going to move to maybe YouTube reviewers and everyone else online but it's still better than what we're seeing right now where these corporate controlled entities are trying to shape the gaming industry in a way that is in line with their personal political point of view and I think it's better to have it divided all with many different social media personalities rather than these global corporate entities so that's why I'm looking forward to see this breakup within the industry but that's just my two cents on the situation I like to hear your thoughts 
Do you think this is the end of the gatekeepers for gaming reviews and just journalists in general? I think it is. But you tell me your two cents on the situation. I like to hear your comments. Like, comment, share, subscribe. This is Wagner Knows Why. Catch you next time.